a short while ago today, I received a telephone call from a, a dear friend, a dear friend of mine and a dear friend of my wife's. He explained that he was in the process of recovering from an illness which he had had for a week or, or possibly two. And he also told us that his wife uh, was also suffering from the same illness. And in fact, at the, at the moment, she is in hospital. She has been in hospital for three or four days, if I remember rightly. Uh, she was seriously ill. Uh, she is now a little better. She seems to be recovering, which is good news. Uh, this affected my wife and I because they are dear friends of ours. And in the course of our conversation, I said to the, the, the husband, the man who had phoned me, uh, we will pray for you and we'll pray for your wife. That was pretty much my first reaction. And when the conversation ended, uh, my wife and I did pray for this lovely couple, husband and wife, that the Lord God would meet their needs. He would aid their recovery, that um, the wife would come out of hospital soon and be able to go home. There would be no setbacks. Uh, there, there would be no deterioration. In fact, that there would be a significant approval. Uh, improvement. We asked for the Lord God to come in his healing power to heal them, to make them well. Now I say this not because I, I'm anything special, not because I'm a man of great prayer, because I, I wouldn't consider myself to be such. But it was my first thought, we'll pray for you. There was a hymn written by Joseph Scriven many years ago, in the, in the 19th century actually, uh, a, fill, a, a hymn with which you may be familiar. It has the title of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I want to read this hymn to you in its entirety, because when my wife and I had finished praying for this dear couple, I came into my study where I am now and I was considering many things, including the, the ill health of this couple and praying for them. And this hymn came to mind. What a friend we have in Jesus. So I'm going to read it to you. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I'll pause there. It is a privilege to be able to carry everything to God in prayer, our own needs and the needs of others in this particular instance about which I've been talking. What a privilege? Yes, it is a privilege because we must never ever forget that the God to whom we pray and uh, in whom we are in a relationship, he is mighty, he is almighty, he is omnipresent, he is everywhere all at once, he is omniscient, he, he knows everything, and he is omnipotent, he is all-powerful, he is the God of creation, he is the God who sustains his creation, and oh, we are in many ways so insignificant, and certainly undeserving, to be able to come before this, this being, this almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God in three persons. Yet, as Christians, if we are born again, we are in a relationship with almighty God. And whilst it is a privilege that we can come before God in prayer, as Christians, it is our entitlement. We are entitled. We are allowed. We have permission. In fact, we are encouraged to come before God in prayer. It's a privilege, yes, but it's more than a privilege to take all matters to God in prayer. The hymn continues, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. 
all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. This is typical, isn't it, of, of, of us. We come across a situation, the circumstances in which we find ourselves are, are pretty rotten, and we try and solve the situation ourselves, work out the problem. We, we turn to other people, so-called experts in various fields, and, and we, we, we don't come before Almighty God. And, and we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Therefore, we forfeit our peace. We lose our peace. And we, we carry needless pain because we do not go to the Lord in prayer. Verse 2 says, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Well, it goes without saying, doesn't it, that throughout the course of our lives we do have trials, problems. We do have temptations and often we, we succumb to those temptations. We, we give in to those temptations. Is there trouble anywhere? Well, yes, of course. The, 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 the questions there are, are, of course, rhetorical because the answer to each of these, have we trials, temptations and trouble? The answer is yes, we do. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who, with, who will all our sorrows share? Jesus will share in our sorrows, not in the sense necessarily that he is sorrowful himself, although God, he has emotions. We see from the Holy Scriptures that the things that people in the past have done and indeed the things which we do, they have an effect upon Almighty God. What we do affects not only ourselves, but it has an effect on Almighty God. He has emotions and he can join in our sorrows and he wants to help us in our sorrows. He wants us to turn to him and carry all our sorrows, whatever they may be, to him in prayer. And prayer in simple terms, as we know, is simply talking to God, being honest with the Lord God, not putting up, not putting on any sort of show or theatrical performance. It's simply in whatever words you use, whatever language you may speak, simply talking to God as I'm talking to you now. Quite naturally, we, we voice our concerns to the Almighty. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Indeed, we are weak people, by and large. In fact, we have so many weaknesses. No matter how strong, and I'm not talking physical strength here. No, we a person can be as strong as an ox. A person can be um, a weightlifter who can lift enormous weights. But that's, this is not the sort of uh, strength we're talking about here, because such a strong person can have weaknesses, faults, cracks in their personality, fault lines. And we know where there is, in talking uh, in geological terms here, where there is a fault line, uh, there is an imperfection and the earth might shift and there, there can be an earthquake as a result of that, there is a fault, there is a weakness. And we all have these weaknesses of, in different areas of our lives, no matter who we are. Jesus knows our every weakness. I mentioned a couple of three minutes ago, we, we come before God who is omniscient. He is all knowing. He knows all about us. And we must take all our sorrows and our Share our weaknesses with the Lord God. Yes, he knows them already, but he delights in us talking to him and sharing our innermost thoughts and opening up our, our deep emotions to him. 
Verse 3, are we weak and heavy laden? Well, yes, we are weak. We've looked at that already. Are we heavy laden? Are we laden down? Are we burdened with, it says in the next line, cumbered with a load of care, encumbered, which means that we, we, are, we have the, the problems. We, we are not free moving. We, there were obstacles in our way. The, 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 the cares which we have prevent us from living the sort of life which we should be living. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered, encumbered with a load of care? Yes, so often we are. Precious Saviour, still our refuge. Oh yes, God is our refuge and our strength in times of trouble. Scripture tells us that. Precious Saviour, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I'm sure we've by now got the message from this hymn. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take, carry everything to God in prayer. Do thy friends despise forsake thee? Yeah, well, friends can be friends one day and not friends the next day. Friends can be fickle. They can be changeable like the weather, like the wind. They can... Friends are people and people have weaknesses. People have prejudices. People, we are not the sort of people whom God created. But because of sinfulness, because sin entered the world through the disobedience of one man, Adam, we have all inherited this sinfulness ever since. And no matter how close a friend you might be to somebody else, there is always that possibility, that risk, that one day you might not be that friend and you might reject somebody or somebody might reject you. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Solace is an English word meaning comfort, care, concern and love. So the Lord Jesus will take you metaphorically, of course, in his arms. He'll wrap his arms around you and give you a hug, a cuddle. He will give you his shoulder on which you can cry. In his arms, he will take and shield you, protect you, look after you. You will find comfort there when we go to the Lord in prayer. Simply talking to God is how I have expressed in simple terms what prayer means. And of course, when we look at scripture, we can see, for example, and prayer permeates the whole of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. I'm going to refer just simply to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5, 6, 7, 8. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 8. The Lord Jesus here is talking, this is part of what is commonly called the Sermon on the Mount. And these verses precede what is commonly called the Lord's Prayer. Let's read verse 5, 6, 7 and 8. Jesus is speaking and he says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray... Do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. That's the style in which we should pray. Not like people who make a show of it, some sort of performance, so that they can be seen by other people and other people can say, 
Oh, he or she prays well. No. When you pray, it, it, it's, it's almost a secretive thing. Now, we can pray with others in a, in a prayer meeting uh, or, or just with one or two as the need arises, as my wife and I did when we finished the conversation with our dear friend uh, earlier on today. Yes, just the two of us prayed. That's great. But when you're on your own, you can go into your room, a secret place, a quiet place, shut the door and pray to the Father in heaven. And, and when we pray, don't use vain repetitions. It's not necessary to pray for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes. There are those who pray long, long, long prayers. But it's not necessary. It says here, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. Don't go on repeating yourself. For the heathen who do such a thing think that they will be heard because they speak many words. No, do not be like that. For the, your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. I've mentioned already he is omniscient. He knows everything. He's all knowing. He knows your problems and my problems. He knows what we are going to be praying about. In fact, before we pray about those things. So there we are, a little look in this message about prayer. From a hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and from Scripture. So above all else, perhaps not above all else actually, because above all else we must worship the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. But pretty much up there on a par with that, on a level with that, is prayer. We must pray, we must carry everything to the Lord God in prayer.